I asked Oris why the loom on the hands never matches the indices on the diver's 65 and I got an answer. Now, I'm not going to say that their response frustrated and irritated me. Oh boy. <laughs> what? However, here it comes. Their response did irritate me and of course I was frustrated. Now, you want to see the response? Stay tuned as we do the review. Let's begin. <laughs> Introducing the all-new Oris Diver 65 Glow, a distinct new look for this distinctive diver. Oris divers look unique already, and having this new style, I believe getting the industry looking, other brands are going to be doing this. This colorway on the hour indices and hands, it's just phenomenal. I am enamored 100%. What? A gorgeous diver. If you guys follow the channel, you know I owned a Diver 65 before and I battled it with the 63 mass and I gave it a huge X Factor mark. They are very charming. There is something special about them. They just feel unique and vintage with modernity mixed in. A welcome addition to any collection. Good lord, I wish this one was on the bracelet. The Diver 65 is a remake of the 1965 Oris Diver. It is a skin diver, meaning you dive with your skin, no wetsuit, no serious diving. But because it's a screw down crown, it's a true 100 meter. On the sides, you can see that high polish mid case that shows off this watch. It's beautiful, sleek, thin, vintage design. It's a relatively flat case, it sits flat on the wrist and the brushing on top of the lugs is immaculate. They make a high quality product and if you're gonna buy this watch, get it on the bracelet. Kavar Jewelers link to their website down below. The bezel insert is aluminum, which I'm a huge fan of. If you're new to this channel, I'm a big fan of aluminum inserts. I prefer them over almost anything else. This one is well done, it looks gorgeous, but let's have a listen. Okay, nice and clicky, very light, has a vintage feel to it and everything lines up. It doesn't inspire confidence, let's say like the Tudor bezel, but it has a unique feel that doesn't feel cheap. It just feels different. Now the measurements, I got 40 millimeters in diameter, 12.8 thick. However, a lot of that 12.8 is that double dome or box sapphire crystal with gorgeous distortion, beautiful. And a lug to lug of 48.1. This thing is gonna wear great on many wrist size. Goldilocks zone right here. The crown is seven mils. It's a nice, big, easy to operate, and it has a clutch system. So what does that mean? When you screw it in, doesn't wind the movement. And that is important when you have an ETA based or Salida movement with those reverser gear issues. Only one position because it's a no date, as you can see. And of course, the hands line up absolutely perfectly. The way Oris puts on their hands is a stroke of genius. Now the dial in hands, the star of the show, we have a beautiful gray gradient dial that fades to black at the edges where the chapter ring is printed. Aqua or Tiffany blue colored indices and hands. Now, when I asked Oris why the hands never match the indices on the Diver 65, they said because then it would be too perfect. Ah, <sighs> so <laughs> frustrated from that answer. On this model, it's not too bad. You don't notice it as much. The Diver 65 that I used to have with the bronze bezel, you could notice it a little bit more. Of course, on my camera, it's gonna be more apparent. I do prefer when the hour indices and the hands match perfectly, like they do on the Black Bay 58. And here you go, here is a side-by-side. -side. Wow, it looks like the Oris wears smaller, which is surprising because it has that all dial look with that ultra slim bezel. Hmm, interesting. I would love to battle these two if this had the 400 caliber. Now, Oris, if you're talking about it would be too perfect, 
listen up if you're listening. I know you're not. This has to become 39 millimeters. You got to put the caliber 400 in here. You got to match, of course, the indices in the hands perfectly. And I want a bracelet with a quick, quick adjust, kind of like the glide lock. All right, make up your own system. Then we're going to be getting close to perfection. Oh, of course, and keep the price the same as the non in-house movement. <laughs> Speaking of price, this one comes in at 2200 USD for the strap, 2400 for the bracelet. So only $200 more for the bracelet. Go for the bracelet. It's a gem. Here it is on my six and a half inch wrist and absolutely beautiful. Every time I walk by this watch on my desk, I get blown away and I'm like, man, I want to put it on. It just has so much X factor. It's absolutely stunning. This colorway is perfect for this watch. And I really want to get the bracelet for it and see how it looks. I wish I could have filmed the macros with the bracelet. Look at that 13 basically height, but it's all crystal. So it wears ultra slim and the lug to lug. You see that flat case, how it kind of lifts a bit. My wrist size is, I'm going to say the smallest for this watch just because of the flat nature of the case. Overall, well done, Oris. Let's do the weight. 76 grams. Wow. Ultra lightweight, beautiful comfort right here. We do have the Salita based SW200, the caliber 733. Now Oris does modify it obviously because that Salita has a date. So they do modify it. Plus they put on their red rotor and here we go. Wow. Look at that amplitude 310, only 0.1 milliseconds in beat error plus four plus three and it's settling down plus one and the fourth and final round plus one. Wow. Let's do 12 down now to get the positional variance, how it will react on your wrist. The error went to 0.2. Amplitude did drop but very little. 296 still ultra powerful and the rate slowed down just a hair. Negative two, negative two, negative two. Wow, very consistent. This movement is great, Elabra grade. Negative two is the final and fourth round. So this watch is called the Glow and it doesn't glow well, unfortunately. The hands are fine and the loom pip, but the hour indices are ultra weak. If we show it next to, let's say the Black Bay 58, you can see the difference right there. Okay, so the loom is disappointing. Come on, Oris. This watch is gorgeous. It has so much charm, so much X factor. I'm in love with it. I am on the fence though of buying it. What do you guys think? Should I pick this one up? Even though they gave me that frustrating response, even though it's far from perfect. I know I make fun of the 2824 Salita S 200 series, but it's still a great movement. If you have one of these movements, you just wind it one or two times and let it charge on your wrist. Don't overwind it if you're used to other brands. Okay. And then you're good. And then it's absolutely fine, especially in top grade or cost spec. This one is only Elabra, but it's still great. Now, let me know what you guys think of this watch down below in the comments and if I should buy it. I'm leaning towards yes, and I think I wore it a little bit too much. Strap looks used. Kavar might not let me give this back. <laughs> I'm not supposed to wear review units this much, but I just kind of fell in love. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.